Almost managed to forget it was today. They're here for me, Geralt. I'm going to Nilfgaard, to Emir. I know you didn't expect this, but in Vizima, my father and I spoke for long. Argued, really, and parted. Then a messenger came with a letter. I didn't say anything at first because I wasn't sure, and then I realized I had to stop fleeing. I realized that if I wish to change anything, I cannot do so hunting monsters around forgotten villages. I must do so from there, from Nilfgaard. You make this choice on your own? If you mean to suggest Yennefer had anything to do with this, then the answer is no. Great. She even know? No. And I'd prefer she not get involved this time. I'll let you tell her that. Is this what you want? Yes. You're not trying to stop me. Take me to the Blue Mountains by force. Traveled half the world to find you, but I never intended to force anything on you. I know. You'll be fine. You're a witcher. We needn't say goodbye. Of course we don't. I don't know when we'll see each other again. You know where to find me. You can't possibly stay at Kaer Morhen all the time. Makes no difference. You'll find me. True. Remember what I taught you. Never know. Could be useful there too. The Third Northern War ended. The invader from the south achieved complete victory. Robbed of Radovid's tactical genius, the Northern realms could not withstand Emir's countless legions. Black banners appeared over Novograd and all Redania. Weary of rebel raids, Emir Varemris conceded, restoring Temeria as a realm in liege to the Empire. When the guerrillas laid down their arms, the Emperor shifted his forces to other fronts. Through Nilfgaard's victory, Temerians got their country back, and history once again proved a consummate trickster. Having dealt with Radovid, Emir of Vardemris did the same with enemies domestic. The Emperor's loyal spies named all who had conspired against him, traitors, soldiers, and aristocrats alike. Though their mutiny had only been a murky plan, the Emperor showed no mercy, as was his wont. While the continent bled engulfed by war, Skellica bloomed under Ceres's enlightened rule. Unlike those who had come before her, the young queen did not raid foreign shores. Looking instead to her people, 
tending to her land. The island-bound nation prospered, though its fangs of yore were dulled. After years in exile, Ciri returned to Nilfgaard, her paternal home, where Emir prepared to name her his successor. The woman had the necessary qualities. From her father, she'd inherited an empress's political instincts. From Geralt, she had gained a sense of simple human decency. Few monarchs boast both traits, which is quite a shame. Hard as it may be to believe, Geralt planted roots in faraway Kovir. He and Triss settled down, their home warm and smelling of freshly baked cakes. Guests were always welcome, no matter the day or the hour. The Witcher would take jobs at times more from habit than need, for Triss earned a true fortune as the mage advisor to Kovir's king.